Hello, hello, hello. Good evening. Buenas, buenas noches. See, si. uh, hey, how is everybody doing? I'm glad you joined me tonight. Uh, as you can see, <laughs> I am back home uh, after spending almost a month uh, traveling, I guess we could say. I don't know how much traveling I actually did, but I was gone. I was away from home for almost a month, and it feels really good to be back. Um, so, hey, I see lots of folks here tonight. Hello, Global Granny. I love that. Not before 10. Hey, y'all. Um, I thought we would just keep things casual and easy tonight and do, uh, do a, a, a Q and A, uh, ask your questions about travel, solo travel, uh, living abroad. I know there are some, some, some new people probably watching this, if not here now, maybe they're going to catch the replay, uh, eventually. And, I feel like I might have answered every question possible, but uh, y'all always surprise me with really thoughtful questions. So um, uh, before I forget and before we jump into things, uh, hello, everybody, especially the new people. My name is Adelia Borashade. Uh, although most people on the internet know me as Picky Girl Travels the World. I am a financial advisor based in Mexico City. I've been living abroad for the last six and a half years. Um, and I have kind of made it my life's work to help Black women live life on their terms. Uh, so if that means traveling, if that means moving abroad, uh, I try to help them realize that uh, by figuring out uh, the financial piece. Um, so those are all things that we talk about on this channel. And if those are topics of interest to you, be sure to click subscribe and to turn on notifications because I typically go live at least once a week. And in theory, I also upload pre-recorded <laughs> pre videos. So uh, hello and welcome. Um, and those of you that are here, please drop your questions in the chat. Um, as I mentioned, I just got back uh, from being in the U.S. for, I don't know, a bunch of days, almost, almost a month. When I left, right before I left, I paid my rent. And then my landlord hit me up today and was like, hey, can I come get that rent? So... <laughs> Basically, I was gone a month. Um, I have some I have some thoughts uh, about spending time in the U.S. this last time. Um, I was there when uh, Mother Nature decided to try and kill us with uh, freezing temperatures. I'm I just I cannot I still cannot wrap my head around how cold it was and. Um, you know, living here in Mexico City, where there's not a big variation uh, from one month to the next, you know, when it gets to be December, January, uh, it's a little cooler <laughs> than the other months, but not dramas dramatically, dramatically so. Um, and it really, you know, at least pre uh, climate change really only got warm here one month a year. Um, and so being thrust into like single digit temperatures Fahrenheit with wind chill, it was, it was wild. It was wild. Also, the United States is so expensive now. I mean, I heard y'all saying that, but oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, earlier today, Stephanie Perry was live over on Instagram and there was a conversation about the price of eggs. And I would have, 
I think had I not been there, I would have bought at like seven, eight dollars for a dozen of eggs. But after being there and seeing just how I couldn't I couldn't go outside without spending fifty dollars. And that is just wild to me. So. Um, so, yeah, I am. I felt like answering questions today. So if you got them, drop them in the chat. I see everybody saying hello. Hello, Lauren. Uh, how you doing? Ba -ba -ba. Okay. So just doing some. Okay, that may not be for me. Was that not for me, Janella? I don't know. I don't know if you were replying to somebody else or if that was for me. I, I This is something that I had noticed probably a year or two ago, um, because in 2021, I ended up spending a month in the U.S. when I went to get vaccinated. And my mind has completely shifted to the prices I pay here. I don't think about things in terms of dollar, like how many dollars does this cost? I think about it in terms of pesos. So I expect things to be priced like they are in Mexico. And um, I don't, I, I really was struggling to understand how most people could afford anything. I know making what I used to make as a public school teacher, uh, I would definitely be struggling. Uh, I'd probably, I'd probably, well, one of the things I had thought about prior to leaving the U.S., like I knew I was going to quit my job. I didn't know what I was going to do. Uh, I just knew I couldn't do that anymore. And so I, I half joked about possibly working at Starbucks. And so I knew, I understood that that might mean that I'd have to have a roommate or something of that, something like that. And uh, yeah, with, with the way things are now, uh, that is probably, probably uh, what I would have to do in order to survive. Um, I was talking to somebody while I was there who was in the process of like looking for an apartment and they had lived in Mexico for a time and was like, you know, I had a three bedroom, two and a half bath apartment, gated community, pools, gym, all of that. And they're like, you're talking about a tiny one bedroom here pushing $2,000. That's wild. That's wild. So yeah, I have some some thoughts about that. Um, okay, Sharon wants to know how much do you pack when you're going to be gone for a month to a warm climate? Now, I actually have unpacked all of the bags and put them away, um, but I have a very small carry on. Uh, it is really about this big. Uh, that typically, no matter where I am going, that is what I pack in. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a cold climate or if it's a warm climate. It is a small bag. Uh, I'll see if I can pull it up here. Um, so generally, the rule is um, that you pack for like a week. Because if you're going to be gone someplace, you know, for an extended period of time, you can do laundry. That's that's not a hard thing to do. So generally, I pack for about a week, a week and a half, and I pack in such a way that things like there's a theme, there's a, a color story happening, so that the pieces are interchangeable and I can have multiple looks. That's that's like when I'm really on it and. Uh, but these last few trips, it's like 20 minutes before I need to leave for the airport. And I just throw some stuff in a bag and I hope it works its way out. Don't be like that. Um, the bag that I use is very small. 
It is 15 inches by 11 inches by eight inches. It is small enough that it fits under uh, the seat in front of me because I, I hate being forced to gate check a bag. Um, so yeah, I can, I can fit, let me see, can I share? Huh. Oh, I can share a tab. Look at this. All right. Let's, let's look at this. All right. So this is the bag that this is my typical, um, Oh, wow. The price on these has gone up. When I bought mine, they were $35. Let's see if this picture is going to load. It's a really, really small bag, but I have traveled. Like I took a big trip January, 2020, uh, about 28, 29 days, nine different uh, cities and countries. And this is what I packed. Um, so it's really about thinking about oops, there we go. Thinking about, you know, how you would pack for a week and you wouldn't bring like seven pairs of pants, you know, uh, you would a couple of pair of pants, a dress or two, a skirt, um, more tops because you can mix and match that way. Warm climates are easier because, uh, sundresses, sandals. The big, big problem is when you have to go somewhere and you need to bring like multiple pairs of shoes or large shoes. That's the other thing that I do is I try to wear whatever the bulkiest thing it is that I have. I try and wear that on the plane. So yeah. Okay. Um, Apart from family, what did you realize you miss most, if anything, during your travel to, I think that's the U.S.? Here's, <laughs> I've been having kind of a, an epiphany. Um, I think you mean the U.S. by this. If you don't, let me know, because that's how I'm going to answer the question. Um when, before I left the U.S., before I moved abroad, I traveled and I very much felt like I needed to be going somewhere all the time, at, at minimum, at least once a month somewhere. And that's what I did. And I would be on a trip and I'd be planning another trip. Soon as I got home, I loved it when I could have trips back to back. Okay, but I was, you know, like I still had a job to go to, go to and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then that continued even when I was in Honduras, when I lived in Kuwait, I tried to stay on a plane when I lived in Kuwait, when I lived in China. Um, but since moving back to Mexico City, um, that's a little different. And, and I, I think the pandemic and everything that has happened over the last few years plays a little bit in that, but mostly like, I like where I live. I want to be at home. So actually I, I have kind of these conflicting desires about travel and what have you. So what I missed the most was my house and, and, and this city being back in Mexico city. This is a place where life makes sense to me life does not always make sense to me in the U S anymore. And, uh, that made me think like, I think I've reached a tipping point. Like I've been gone long enough that like, I mean, the U S stopped feeling like home a long time ago, but like, it's, it's really not my place anymore. Um, I think I've been gone long enough that there are just too many, too many other places, particularly Mexico city where I live that I would rather be. So yeah, um, the thing that I miss most was Mexico City. I miss being at home, <laughs> which is odd for somebody who really, really loved being gone. And so that makes me think that like, part of my wanderlust was because I didn't, I, I guess deep down, I didn't love where I was living. Do you use packing cubes to hold your clothes? No, I roll, I roll my clothes 
and then I push them down into the, into the bag, uh, whatever I'm packing. I like the idea of packing cubes. They seem super efficient, but it's just nothing I've ever been, I've never felt compelled to use them. Um, and when, when I pack bigger bags, it's really not a question of how much can I fit, like, Space-wise, it's more a concern about weight, and packing cubes don't help with weight. Okay. Yeah, I think I talking about the bag that is now one hundred and five dollars. That's wild. I knew they had gone up to about fifty. I bought mine in two thousand thirteen, so it has been ten years since I bought mine. Um, they are made in the U.S. So as U.S., I was going to say as U.S. labor prices go up, so would those bags. But have U.S. labor prices gone up? I don't know. But yeah, that is quite the jump. Okay. Um, do you purchase toiletries when you get to your destination? It depends. If it is someplace that I am going to be for a while, I might, um, but for the most part, I just, I buy things that I use in my regular life, but I, I am mindful of um, container size. Like I won't buy moisturizer in something that's bigger than a hundred milliliters. I won't buy toothpaste in something that's bigger than a hundred milliliters. That way I can just throw it. I have a little small zip zipper pouch where I keep my toiletries. And so it's, I don't have to keep like a separate set of travel toiletries and other ones. I just try and buy things already in small sizes. And then I have a few empty containers that I put things in. Um, it's definitely easier now that I have less hair. Um, but even when I had more hair, um, it was just a matter of like, I might, if I was going to be gone for a long time, like a month or two, I might bring enough like conditioner with me to get through a couple of weeks and then pick up something while I'm there. But um, usually I just bring stuff with me. Okay. When is your next financial planning session? Um, well, this on Monday with uh, technically Sunday, but really Monday. Um, I every so often I do the get started investing challenge. I don't know if you are referring to that, but uh, the, the next one starts next week. Um, do I have a link for that? I can't even tell you if I put a link in the description. I meant to. I meant to. Okay. So uh, the challenge starts on the 16th. Um, we have like an introductory call on the 15th, just, you know, for everybody to say hello and get to know each other. But it's a six day challenge. Um, there are three Zoom calls, uh, there's activities each day. Um, and uh, the I'm trying to think of all the questions people ask. Their calls are generally at 7 p.m. Eastern. They are recorded. Now, if you are meaning um, like the one-on-one -on -one sessions that I do, uh, ooh, do I have a link for that? Do I? Look at this. Look at this. Look at me. Okay. Um, these go on just throughout the year. There's not a set time that I do the, do these, at least not right, right now. So if you go to bit.ly slash ask Adelia, you can see like what's available on my calendar. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I got going on. So the get started investing challenge starts next week. But if you're talking about like a one on one, um, those you can book kind of anytime. 
uh, is assuming the calendar is open. Um, like much of December, my calendar was not open. Okay, let's see. How much courage does it take to get out and about in various locales? That's a good question. I've never thought about it being a matter of courage. Um, it's, is there something I wanna see? I'm going to go see it. Is there something I want to eat? I'll go eat it. But there are also times when I don't want, like, I'm thinking about when I went to Malaysia to Kuala Lumpur, it was so hot, so hot. I felt like I was melting. And I just, I, I tried to go outside only at night. But that was more about the temperature and not really about like not wanting to go outside because um, I don't know what the what the opposite of courage is. So for me, it's really about what do I want to see? But I don't when I travel, I never feel pressed about like, oh, I have to plan things from this time to this time. And I've, I've got to spend so much time. No, I go. I may make a short list, like bullet points of what are the things I want to see? Are there places I want to eat? I always check what's the best hot chocolate spot in, in town. <laughs> and uh, unless it's something that like is ticketed, I don't stress about when I go out. And so for me, I keep it very laid back, very casual. I don't have any big expectations, um, but you know, I'm an introvert. And I do have anxiety. So there are times when I just don't want to people and I won't. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers your question. SLS forever. Do you have a specific routine for getting oriented to a new place? If you mean like when I'm traveling, well, I guess it's the same for even when I move someplace. Um, I generally try and find a bakery. Uh, I do, I do have a love of pastry. So I generally try to find a bakery, uh, and like just wander the neighborhood. Uh, that is, I wouldn't call it a specific routine, but that is how I get oriented in a place. I find that walking is the best way to do that, to get a sense of what's the vibe of the place what, you know, what's what, that sort of thing. Um, or if, if there is something specific I want to see, I usually try to stay within walking distance that doesn't always pan out. And so even if it might be, let's say y'all, those of you in the U S might consider like a 30, 45 minute walk to be long. But, um, if, I'm walking to that destination and I get to explore things on the way, you know, cause I'm always looking for new bakeries, cafes, places that look interesting. Are there little shops I can wander in and out? So yeah, um, especially I do that when I am someplace uh, long-term. I may just open up Google maps to find a destination and then just kind of observe the things on the, on the way. Um, I'd also say that if it's longer term, like I'm moving to that place, I do try and connect with folks, like if there's a Facebook group or uh, something like that. So yeah. <laughs> I'm laughing at you, Alicia. Somebody, I'm experiencing something similar. I'm having a hard time making vacation plans for spring break because I know Mexico City is waiting. I typically love new destinations, but now there's Mexico City. Yeah, um, I'm noticing that how I feel about travel is different and also the way I'm willing to do it. So like... Um, I had plans to go spend a month someplace. And then I got to looking at accommodations costs and they were just ridiculous. And I also have to pay rent here. 
And I was, I, I said this, to, I said this today, I did not care about being gone all the time when somebody else was paying my rent. Like when I worked abroad and somebody else was putting the bill, I didn't mind leaving an empty apartment for weeks at a time. But now that I am, uh, now that I am again paying the rent, that does make it harder <laughs> to then go spend money on accommodations elsewhere, especially when those are many times more expensive than where I live. Um, so, you know, I thought like, oh, I'll be gone a month, but really, I don't want to be gone a month. I don't think I want to be gone more than about two weeks. I think that's the new rule. Um, unless, unless it's something special, I think just because I, I've told y'all this before, I'm often get caught up in, oh, well, I'm flying to that side of the world. I might as well try and see as much as I can even though I hate having to constantly move and pack and unpack and repack. And I keep doing, I kept doing that to myself. I think I have stopped. Well, September, I did that again. And then I reminded myself and I was like, no more than two countries on a trip. Um, I think that's my limit now. And about two weeks is my limit that I would like to be gone. We'll see if I can stick to those rules. Um, mm -hmm. Hey DJ, Mexico City seems to be the perfect city for me. However, earthquakes, I'm surprised this was not a deal breaker for you. How do you deal with earthquakes? Um, I don't, I don't worry about earthquakes. I, I think part of it is because the inevitability of it, there will, this is not a question of will there be earthquakes? It is a question of, it's just a matter of time. So there's that. Um, number two, they can't be predicted. So like, I'm not going to give any energy to being worried about something that's just going to happen. It's like, you know, being struck by lightning or whatever. Um, I don't see the point in fretting about it. And I don't know, it, it doesn't bother me um, in the way I, I, I'm with you. I'm surprised too, because if you had asked Adelia 10 years ago, would she live in a place that was prone to earthquakes? She would have probably said, hell no. Um, but they really, they really haven't, haven't been an issue for me. I was here in Mexico City in 2017 when the big quake happened on September 19th. Um, my first earthquake was about 12 days before that. And it was like close to midnight, woke me up. I wasn't even sure it was an earthquake. I thought somebody was just moving the bed. Um, and so I've experienced a few others while I was here. Um, we had one was it December or was it November? And I wasn't even, I didn't even hear the earthquake alarm. Uh, I ended up texting somebody and was like, Hey, was that an earthquake? Although to be fair, there are times when my building moves and I think it's an earthquake and everybody's like, no, that's just your building moving. Um, so yeah, it's, it hasn't been a deal breaker for me. When I first moved here, my major concern was, if I got stuck in the metro during an earthquake and was like stranded, I always made sure I had some kind of snack in my bag and that I had at least a bottle of water. Um, come to find out that being in the metro system might be the safest place to be because of how they engineered it. But yeah, it hasn't been a deal breaker for me. Um, what's more of a deal breaker for me is like, temperature, climate. I cannot live someplace that's hot. Earthquakes, mm, no big deal. V. Negra Bella. Bella. Uh, what's the best way to find travel buddies? All my friends aren't interested in visiting countries I want to explore. Um, I can't, I don't know if I can tell you how to fly, find travel buddies. Cause I would just go by myself. I would not wait. I was thinking about this the other day. Um, 
my very, okay, I had traveled for business solo, but I don't know if we're really going to count that. But the first trip I ended up going on by myself was a one week trip to Beijing, China. My best friend was supposed to go, but she ended up having to work. So I went anyway. And, you know, typically up until that point in my life, I always thought about, you know, like, um, I'm trying to think of what the company is, but really you would see these advertisements for like, oh, a trip to China based on double occupancy. This is a thing. So I thought you had to have somebody to go with you. After doing that trip by myself, I started to understand that like there are single supplements, like I could just pay a little bit extra and then I don't have to find somebody to go with me. But what really changed the game for me was understanding that you could just book a, a find a flight deal, book your hotel. And generally it was usually cheaper than most of these prepackaged things. So I am always going to advocate to you to go by yourself. Um, there are several videos on this channel about uh, solo travel, how to stay safe, because I know that that is sometimes a concern for people. Um, but if you're like, yeah, Delia, I didn't ask for that. I asked, how do I find a travel buddy? Um, you need to get in spaces where other people are looking for travel buddies. There are Facebook groups, not my Facebook group. I have a Facebook group called Picky Girls Travel Solo, and it is for Black women and femmes who want to solo travel, who are solo travelers, old, young, whatever. Number One of our number one rules is don't ask for travel buddies. Don't make it weird because we like to travel alone. But there are other Facebook groups where people will post, I am looking for a travel buddy. I want to go here and they connect with women and other people and find people to travel with. Um, but I would say you could go by yourself. That's what I would say. Don't wait on your friends though. Definitely. That. Okay. Not including Mexico. What are your top three countries? My top three countries for what? Um, to live? Ooh, that is tough. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Uh, top three countries to live would probably be like, oh, that's hard. Um, if, if weather was not a thing. It might be the Netherlands or Sweden or Copenhagen. But since, I mean, Denmark, but since weather is a thing, um, I, could, I could work with Spain. Like, <laughs> this is a really hard question to answer because if I'm thinking about in terms of a place to live, Mexico City is here and everybody else is down here. So like, yeah, I could, I, Spain, I could work with that. I could probably work with Portugal. Um, I don't know. But if you're talking about to visit, um, Iceland is on that list. Um... I might even say Germany is on that list. Um, I'm sure y'all can hear Mia. <laughs> uh, I don't know. That's that's hard. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I would like to be able to list some countries in South America, but I have only been to uh, Colombia and at that just Cartagena. So. I can't, I can, at this point, I can't answer about any of those countries, but I don't know. I don't know. I wish I, I wish I could answer that country, that question. I should be able to, but I can't. 
what tools do you use? Hey, Kim, Kimmy, what tools do you use to help you plan activities, experiences you might like at a travel destination? Um, I like Atlas Obscura because I like to see, are there kind of like any off the beaten path kind of things? Like um, last December, I was in Venice uh, and on there, I found out there, there was a, I was going to say a prostitution bridge, but no, maybe it was a, a breast bridge basically is where the prostitutes used to go to like show their wares. You don't find that like <laughs> when you just Google. So I might look there to see if there's anything that is of interest to me. I see what all the like normal, regular things to do lists put on them. Uh, I might Google, you know, whatever the place is, what is it known for to see if there's anything of interest for me there. Um, and then of course I use Google map, uh, Google maps because I will mark those places on my map because as I mentioned before, I like to wander or I like, if I happen, let's say I do a walking tour. That's the other thing. Uh, I always like to start a trip with a free walking tour to kind of one of the first activities I do to sort of get a lay of the land. And so let's say the walking tour is over. Generally, they end someplace different than they begin. But because I've marked different places on my map, I'll pull out the map and see like, what am I close by? And then that helps direct my wandering. Um, I will also use like uh, get your guide or, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this Viator Viator. I don't know which is the correct. I might go there just to see like, what are the experiences that they may offer in a place? And then I like to check out Airbnb experiences too, because again, uh, in a lot of places, those are things done by locals. So, you know, a way to put, keep money in, in, in the local economy, but also get to do something a little different. Um, with Locals is another site that I've used, um, trying to figure out what is there to do that might be cool. Oh, thank you, Dee. Um, hmm. I've never seen this double M uh, Facebook groups that make you jump through hoops to join or say there's a limit to the amount of members. I don't, I don't know. Is there a limit? No. Cause I am in a expat group from Mexico that has like more than a hundred thousand people. So that might be a limit that they are enforcing. Um, as far as hoops to get into a group. I mean, I, for my group, I asked some questions. Um, because uh, it's information I want to know about the people in the group. And it gives me a chance to, I want to keep it a community specifically for Black women and femmes. And so um, sometimes I get folks who do not fit in those categories who ask for access and I do not want to grant it to them. So I put a few hoops in the way um, to keep those folks out. Um, I'm planning to leave UK for Europe, Africa, three months. Would you recommend just a carry on or check in or, Ooh, I am always reluctant to check a bag and seeing the shots. Think about this past summer. Think about what just happened in over Christmas. Um, I am always hesitant to check a bag. But I know that there are some of you who, you know, you like your things, you want your full size products and all of that. Uh, I don't know. It I, I would make this decision more when it comes to like climate and the kinds of activities you're going to do, because I would look at, well, what are the clothes that you need to bring? If clim climactic wise, climactically, um, these are all going to be similar. 
I think you could probably get by with a personal item and a carry on. But if there's going to be a wide range or you need some specific gear, um, that might be different. But this is just me and my opinion. I am always hesitant to check bags outside of moving from one country to another. And when I went to Morocco last year, I checked a bag because of the variety of clothes that I needed for that. I checked a bag. Um, so yeah, I'm, I, I tend to always say carry on if you can. Um, but I know there are people who are like, nope, I got to check a bag. Um, there's a lot of confidence questions here. I've, I've never thought about any of this in those terms. So I find that really interesting. How do you build your confidence to you use public transport, the bus or the train? I avoid it. Buses or trains for fear of getting lost and being unable to navigate back. Okay, that is a real concern. Um, mass transit, so like the metro, anything that works like that where I don't have to talk to anybody in a foreign language, where uh, they are, there are predetermined stops, those are super easy. Because like when you think about a metro train, there is a, a station. You pay your money, you get a ticket, you go through the station, you get on. Let's say you're going the wrong direction. You just get off, you cross over to the other side, you go back. Very easy. Buses like on the street, that can be a little bit more challenging. And uh, yeah, I'm still trying to learn and master the bus, the different levels of buses here in Mexico City. But anything that works like a metro, where uh, it's pre there are predetermined stops. I know exactly where I get on uh, and having to change direction if I need to, that's, that's easy. Those are easy, easy things. Um, and so I'm trying to think, where have I taken the bus? I have taken the bus. I took the bus in New Zealand. The bus driver was mean to me because I didn't have the exact amount of money. Um, that's, that's what more gives me anxiety is about getting on the bus and needing exact change. So anything that I can buy a ticket for, that to me is easy. Um, having to have the exact right amount of change or if I've got to talk to somebody to figure out where I need to go. And so one thing you could do is if you're staying, let's say, at a hotel or even if you're staying at a hostel, talk to the people at the front desk and have them walk you through. This is where, you know, like this is where I'm trying to go, that sort of thing. Uh, the first time I went to China, I wanted to go. Like I said, I try to go to unusual places. And there is an anti-Japanese museum in Beijing. And I was like, who has the balls to name their museum that? I need to see it. Of course, it was clear on the other side of town. The only way to get there was a taxi. I don't speak Mandarin. Uh, so the concierge at the hotel wrote out the stuff in the characters for me. And I stood on the corner and I just held up the little piece of paper until a taxi driver um, you know, took me over there. Same way to get back. I think maybe I took the subway back. I don't know, but I got back. Um, so I would say if you're trying to build up the courage, start with something that's more straightforward or ask if you're at an Airbnb, ask the host, or if you're staying at a hotel or whatever, have somebody at the front desk or the concierge kind of walk you through what you should expect, that sort of thing. Uh, yes, I still make my own clothes. Um, I, 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 you know, with this being January and everybody's like making resolutions and all that, 
Um, I, I went a little crazy buying fabric last year, so um, I won't be buying any more fabric. I'm sure I have enough fabric to make whatever it is I want to make. And that's another reason I want to be home is because I want to sew some more stuff. So yeah, I am. Um, okay, <laughs> I feel this. Uh, Alicia says, factoring in the ridiculous of flight prices and cancellation, it definitely gives me pause. My new question is, is it worth all of that travel entails now. And that is something I've said multiple times on this channel, travel is so much harder than it used to be. Um, you know, at first it was all of the different COVID protocols and testing and all of that. But now it is just because we're still trying to come out of all of the staff cuts and all of that stuff from uh, the beginning of the pandemic, as well as, you know, there's a new, it seems like there's a new disease going around every other week. Um, travel doesn't seem to be as seamless now, or at least when there are issues, they seem to blow up. And I don't know if that's a factor of the number of people who are traveling now or what the deal is, but yeah. Um, one of the things, one of the new travel rules I have is about direct flights. I was the queen of the long layover. I, I was going to, because again, I'm trying to get the most bang for my buck. If I can visit two or three places on the same flight, because I've got a, a long layover on my flight going and a different long layover on my flight coming back, Oh, great. I could squeeze in an extra country, another city, what have you. I'm not playing those games now because I don't want to get stuck somewhere. I am trying to get from point A to point B as quickly as I can in the most direct way possible. And when I cannot get a direct flight because leaving from Mexico City makes that a little bit more challenging, um, depending on where I'm trying to go, I try not to transit through the United States because if we, I may be wrong about this, but if we look back at the various travel snafus, now I'm not talking about like labor strikes because I know Europe, that's a thing. I'm not talking about that, but the various travel snafus, I feel like a lot of those happen in the U.S. and they kind of cascade. One thing leads to another. So I feel like if I can, if I have to transit, if I can transit outside the U.S., that would be better. So, yeah. Mm, let's see. I, I agree with you, Corrine. Um, I, I don't believe I'm waiting on, on anyone or any special thing like, oh, I'll do that when X, Y, and Z happens. No, I'm, I'm living a day. Let's see. Oops. <laughs> Hustle Health Then Well says, solo travel is life changing because travel buddies are like finding soulmates. It's rare. And here's the other thing. I can't travel with everybody. Um, I may really like you as a person, but that doesn't mean we're going to mesh well when we travel. So um, I think that adds to another layer of difficulty to finding a good, good travel buddy. Glass half full. Why are you still feeling a little guilty about your solo trip to Mexico? Why are you feeling guilty? You should not feel guilty. You, de you deserve it. You earned it. Or are you feeling guilty that it's just to Mexico? Because Mexico is, is a whole nother country. I don't want you to feel guilty. You should not feel guilty. You deserve it. Okay. 
I scroll down to see something and then um, I don't know what kind of insights or advice I can give other than don't feel guilty. Go. You, you get one shot at life. And if this is what you want to do, I don't see why you shouldn't do it. Um, what countries would you recommend for a newbie solo travelers because they are easier to navigate? Um, I think Iceland is, is good for newbie solo travelers. Uh, the country is this big. The capital is this big. <laughs> Uh, and everybody speaks English. Now, it's super expensive, but very easy to do. I think if you stay in the main tourist areas in Thailand, that's another easy one. Any place in the Caribbean. Um, more of, I'd say, the places I would avoid going solo. Like, I wouldn't try to do Cuba as my first solo trip because Cuba's hard. Um and Cuba's hard in ways like I, th I think you can do Cuba solo, but after you've got a little travel under your belt, you can kind of anticipate some of the struggles that you would have there. I would not go to. I was going to say I wouldn't go to Kuwait, but I wouldn't go to Kuwait at all, period. <laughs> not just for solo travel, just not ever. Um, so, yeah, I think. Really, most most times when I get this question, I say you can go wherever you want, but uh, places that get lots of tourists are going to be easier to navigate when you are a novice or if you don't speak the language. Um, so, um, like I said, uh, Thailand, pretty much all of Europe is going to be fairly easy. Mm. I was going to say like, okay, former Eastern Bloc Soviet republics uh, like Romania, that might be a little extra work just simply because they don't have a lot of tourist infrastructure in place. So again, if it's a place that gets lots of tourists, you can, you can do it solo. It's not going to be that hard. Um, I prefer staying in hostels with private rooms. It's extremely economical and you meet people from all over the world. Do you have experience with hostels or is it something you'd recommend? Uh, I used to stay at hostels almost exclusively before the pandemic. And then with the pandemic, I did not want to get people's cooties. So there were no hostels for me. Um, there is a video on this channel and I'm trying to pull up the link now, but this computer is like, girl, you doing too much. Um, it was me, Stephanie Perry and Rashida Dow, uh, where we kind of faced off discussing hostels versus Airbnbs with a little bit in there about hotel. So yes, I am. I am a fan of hostels and they eat in hostels all around the world. Um, I will tell you that I'm, I'm a little turned off now by um, Airbnbs. I don't like, there are many reasons I am turned off by Airbnbs right now. Uh, but mainly because when I'm looking, I want to know, <laughs> uh, here's the, the URL. I dropped it in the chat, um, hostels versus Airbnb. And I see Rashida still <laughs> hasn't stayed in a hostel. I'm thinking that she never will. I, I think that's pretty safe money. Um, I am a little turned off with Airbnb right now because one of the changes they were supposed to be making is that when you would search previously, when you searched and you, they would show you the rate per day. But so let, let's say you were willing to spend $50 a night. Um, but then when you would click on it, 
there's the cleaning fee, there's, you know, this fee, that fee, all of that. So they were supposed to be making things better and show you the total price, but they still don't include taxes with that. I found that to be annoying. I also know that customer service with Airbnb, like if something goes wrong, is kind of hit or miss. And the, the work of having to try and get somebody on the phone to resolve my issue, I don't like that. So I, don't, I, I have some complicated feelings about Airbnb right now. Uh, where would you say the best place in Mexico for learning like classes or sewing or crafts? Um, it depends on what it is you want to learn. Um, like this t-shirt, I took a screen printing class here in Mexico city last year. Was it last year? Year before? I don't know. Uh, 2021, I guess was when I did that. And so you can, you can learn anything here. Um, but I don't know that Mexico city is the best place to learn those things. I keep toying with the idea of going to Oaxaca to learn um, like textile weaving. So it depends on what the craft is. If it is a specific handicraft like Leon in uh, Guanajuato is known for leather. So if I was a leather craft person, I might try and investigate there. So I think it just depends. Um, yeah. Um, Kay Stewart, which teach abroad company company would you recommend? I, I don't know that I do. <laughs> uh, y'all may not realize this, but I did write a book about teaching abroad. It's on, uh, Amazon. Uh, and if I was really on top of things, I would drop a link, but I'm not, I'm not on top of things like that. Um, I, I talk about it. I talk about it in that book. Um, I, I would say that don't assume that you need to go with a teach abroad company. You can apply directly to schools or what you could also do is go to job fairs hosted by kind of larger organizations like uh, ASA, which I cannot remember what the acronym means. It's like A-A-S-A. -A it's basically the Association of American Schools in South America or something like that uh, on their website. So their member schools post jobs on their website. Um, but some of, I, I, I think you have to be very careful vetting a teach abroad company because they are, a lot of them are interested in filling a job and not necessarily, um, getting you like getting you a good placement. So, um, then there are the big ones like search associates. Um, I will say if a teach abroad company is free, if, if they're supposed to be helping you find a job abroad and it's free for their service, I don't know about that. Uh, now, if you, oh, uh, I have a, a list of red flags. If you are looking for a job abroad, Kay Stewart, if you go to my website, which is not updated at all, I should be ashamed. Uh, PiggyGirlTravelsTheWorld.com and under resources, I believe there is a link to a download I have about red flags. Like if you see, if, if they ask you to do this, don't sign with them. Um, now, a school should not ask you for money. A school shouldn't say, oh, but send us this amount of money, blah, blah, blah. No. But if you are using a recruiter, it is not unusual that they might express they would have a fee for their service. Um, do you travel with Mia? Uh, for the folks that are new here, Mia is my 
geriatric uh, miniature schnauzer, uh, or do you find a doggy daycare? Um, Mia is funny acting. Uh, so I don't know that doggy daycare would be a good move for her, but uh, we have done trusted house sitters, sitters. Uh, she travels with me. She just went with me to the U.S. Um, there are various dog sitters we've done. Um, so my dog personally, she I don't think she's built for doggy daycare, but um, I travel with her when I can. And there is also a video on this channel. There's actually, I think, two videos about traveling with the dog and all that entails. Um, probably if you search something like pet travel, let me see what it is. Um, let's see. Is it helps if I spell pet properly? No. Okay, so is it dog? Okay, yes. Uh, how to take your dog when you travel, international pet travel, traveling through Mexico with a dog, two videos I did that are on this channel. Um, so yeah. Um, <laughs> I was trying to understand what this comment was about. <laughs> And I think somebody would like me to wait, make them something to wear. And my general policy is that I do not sew for other people, but I will teach you how to sew. Um, so I think I think that's what Stephanie was talking about. Um, what are your go-to booking sites for flight deals? Um, I think I talk about this in the solo travel video. Um, but you know, like Scott's cheap flights, airfare spot, secret flying, some of those. I also am a member of a lot of Facebook travel groups and people who do spend a lot of time tracking deals will often post the deals they find in there. I'm not super pressed about it. It's more of like, I let the deal come to me. I am not somebody who's going to do a lot of work to find the deal because there are other things I'd rather be doing with my time. Okay, this is an unexpected question. <laughs> How easy is it for you to color your hair and getting it the right shade? I don't, okay, right shade implies that this was intentional. Uh, I bought the dye. This was the color that came out. And I was like, yeah, I like that. And it's very easy dye. Um, if it was super complicated, like uh, last year when my hair used to be fuchsia, when it, it had to be bleached first and then I'll, mm, no, I can't do all of that. So I have, uh, I think it's, it's by Ion. I want to say true color uh, something they sell at Sally's that is made for um, people with dark hair um, so you don't have to like where it will lift the color a little bit but um, I'm trying to think of the name I know the brand and I know it has true in the title but no it was easy uh, and I just, I like the color it came out. I wasn't gonna stress too much about that. Okay. Yeah, Hong Kong, I, I would not recommend travel to Hong Kong right now. Um, I just got a step notification uh, from the, what do you call it, the State Department, and I can never remember what step stands for. <laughs> I 
I've drawn a blank, but I just got a step notification. Let me see if I can pull it up over here. Uh, it was mainly about mainland China, but the relationship between mainland China and uh, Hong Kong, I really don't like the direction it's going. But yeah, super easy to navigate. Everybody speaks English. Very easy. Uh, <laughs> I like this, not before 10. Ladies who are afraid to travel, you don't know what you don't know until you're, you're your own travel buddy. And I would also say this, if you are afraid to travel solo, think about how you live your life. Think about all of the things you do in a day. Is somebody with you doing those things or are you doing them by yourself? Travel is no different than that. Um, so it's, I don't see it as being that big of a jump. It, you already have the skill set. Um, midlife money moves. Have you heard of the app called Selena? Is it tied to the hostels? Um, the hostels look nice, but every time I've looked at them on various booking sites, the reviews aren't great. The, like I will use booking.com a lot as kind of where I start. And I will, I don't want to look at a place that's not at preferably a nine, but I will sometimes bring it down to an eight because sometimes my budget cannot afford a nine. And the Selena hostels tend to be like sevens. So I don't, I've not, I don't know anybody personally who has ever stayed at one, but I've, I've found that interesting that the reviews don't tend to be great or the ratings don't tend to be great. So, um, I, I, I wonder about those. Rashi, I see Rashida is besmirching my dog's name in the comments. Oh, Cheryl. Uh, no, I am. Not, I've, I've been in. I was in Houston in November when I went to vote. Uh, you opened a step RA. All right, way to go. Now, make sure that you fund it and that you actually make investments with the money you fund it. So remember that. And uh, I'll take this as a moment to remind you all that if you have an IRA, you can still make contributions to that IRA for the 2021 tax year up until tax day in April. So if you didn't meet the max and you're like, oh, I do have a little extra cash, why don't you go ahead and put it in your IRA? Um, and IRA contribution limits went up for 2023. You can now contribute $6,500 to your IRA. If you are under 50 and if you are older, over 50, you can contribute $7,500 a year. Thank you, Janella. I can never remember what SMART stands for, SMART Traveler Enrollment Program. I still get alerts for China because I think I was being a smart ass when I signed up. And they ask you when you put a trip in, you're supposed to put a start date and an end date. And I, maybe I put something like indefinitely or what have you. So I, and I can't figure out how to turn it off. So I still get updates for China. We can we can get together and sew. I'm 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 trying to get Ivana to sew. Uh, so no, we can sew together. I just won't sew stuff for you. <laughs> I won't be doing that. Okay. Yeah, she Rashida talks bad about my dog, my sweet sweet dog, who I will admit has gotten a little persnickety in her old age. Um, she does not, she does not play. I'm not going to say she doesn't play well with other dogs because it's situational. Um, 
I stayed with a friend when I was in the U.S. who has a dog who historically does not like Mia. But I think it's been a few years since he's seen her. So he forgot he didn't like her. And they got along just fine. She was in his bed. He was in her bed. They went on walks together. They were great. But a random dog walking down the street just existing, girl loses her shit. She's like, how dare you exist in my exact same plane of, of being? No, we can't do that. So, yeah, she's she's wild. She's wild. OK, so I'm coming back to Janela's original question statement. Um, so just doing some geographical tips or lessons from around the world, pros and cons. I like. One of the things, one of the things that I choose when I travel, as much as I am not like nature girl or outdoorsy girl, I um, like if there is a natural wonder, I will often try to see it. So like the last time I went to Vegas before I left the U.S., I didn't really go to Vegas. I had a, a I got some cheap flight on Frontier uh, to Vegas. And then I rented a car and drove out to Death Valley because I wanted to I wanted to walk like on the salt flats and I wanted to be in the lowest point in in the U.S. I know maybe North America. I can't remember. Uh, Badwater Basin, I think it's called. Um, so I'll do stuff like that. Um, if I can see, I'm hoping to get to Finland as much as I hate the cold. I would really, really like to see the northern lights. Um, so I think I'm going to figure out a way to get to Finland during the time. And I know you can't predict when it's going to happen that far in advance, but I'm going to try and be ready to go so that I can see them. Um, I'm trying to think what other cool geographic things. Oh, like when I went to Iceland, I went with a friend of mine. Uh, we're both geographers and we stood on the mid Atlantic Ridge, you know, the place where the tectonic plates are moving apart and new crust is made. And so we were just being very big geography dorks and be like, oh, I'm in Europe, you're in North America. And then we'd switch spots, fun, fun times. Um, so yeah. I'm trying to think of what else. Um, see, Alicia knows Mia is a joy. She is a sweet, sweet girl. Absolutely. Um, I see there's a question about bringing a sewing machine to Mexico. Let me, <laughs> let me share a little bit with y'all about this. Um, when I moved here in 2017, I brought my sewing machine as a carry-on. I removed the needle because you can't, I don't know what they think you're going to do with it, but I removed the needle, getting it through TSA, no big deal. Come into Mexico. Well, when I leave Mexico a year later, thinking I'm going to carry it out, they were like, absolutely not. And I was like, but why not? I brought it in this way. And they were like, no. And I could not get a good explanation. So I had to check it when I left. Um, and so that's when I started putting it in one of my checked bags. Uh, because you just never know with other countries unless you can talk to somebody uh, specifically uh, who's had the experience. So like when I moved to... Was it China or was it Kuwait? One of them, it was, I brought it as a carry-on. It Again, leaving the U.S. with a sewing machine as a carry-on was not a big deal. The problem came when I tried to leave Mexico. So when I'm leaving a country and I can't talk to somebody who has left with a sewing machine as a carry-on, I pack it. Um, so there's, there's my little two cents about that. Do y'all have... Any other questions? It doesn't look like you do. Um, so 
I will use this moment while I wait to see if there are any more questions as a reminder that if one of your resolutions or your goals or one of the things on your vision board was for you to um, start investing, learn about investing, or understand better what you're already doing through your job, um, you might want to consider the um, Get Started Investing Challenge, six-day challenge. Specifically, it is meant for novices. If you're already making trades on your own, I don't think you're going to get a whole lot for this. But if you've been afraid to kind of take action because you don't want to mess up, I get a lot of people like that, this would be the thing for you. Um, if you've had a 401k at your job and you just be telling, filling out stuff on the paperwork, uh, but you don't really know what you're invested in, this would be a good challenge for you. Um, I will also mention that if you are watching this and you are considering a move abroad, but you're like, I don't know what to, where to start, or I don't know, um, like what are all the things I should be thinking about? Maybe you should grab my move abroad checklist. Um, it will kind of give you um, a breakdown of the different areas and things uh, that you can you need to consider. Uh, there are links for both of those things in the description of this video. Um, what are your travel plans for the year? Uh, nobody asked about that. <laughs> um, I will leave at the end of this month. Many of you know I have been invited along on a little special project with uh, Rashida to um, handle her storage unit, explore her storage unit. I, I'm not really sure but I have been invited on that excursion. Um, and then where am I going? I feel okay. I feel like there's someplace else I'm going. Uh, I'll be in Morocco again in April. Uh, I just went to Morocco last April. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do a little bit of traveling around Mexico. And I feel like there's some place I'm forgetting. I'm, I've got travel every month until May. And then um, I hadn't found anything for the summer yet. And I wondered if this summer was going to be like last summer. Um, because y'all remember, there were a bunch of travel problems last like winter. And they told us, hey, there's going to be more of this. It's going to be a shit show this summer. I made a point not to leave the country during the summer. So I avoided all that. The travel I did was in Mexico. It was great. Um, I wonder if this summer will be that way as well. Uh, and then my daughter reached out and was like, hey, um, can kid one, kid one's coming to hang out with you this summer, right? So I may not be traveling this summer. I may be playing a uh, host <laughs> to a seven-year-old, eight to an eight-year-old this summer. I don't know. And then in, I have travel plans in November that I'm not ready to discuss publicly yet. And then I have travel plans. I'm supposed to, I think I'll be in Dubai uh, for Christmas and New Year's. Um, so I need to figure out what's happening in like September, August. Um, I'm not sure where Finland, Finland may end up falling at the beginning of 2024. I'm not sure because I, I, like I said, I want to see the Northern Lights and I don't know. I've I've told y'all, like, I'm trying to keep it where I'm not gone for more than two weeks at a time. So I don't know if I can fit like Dubai and Finland in the same month. I don't know. So we'll we'll have to see about that. So, yeah, um, not every month is booked. And I think I'm going to try and keep it that way. 
but who knows? Because all it's going to take is for somebody to be like, hey, do you want to go here? And I'll be like, yeah, rules just go out the window. Um, do you book your flights through a third party site or do you go to the airline and book? I do not book through a third party site. I got burned once. Like I bought... It was an Air Canada flight to, I think it was Australia, because I have been trying to get to Australia for like the last five years to go to this peanut butter restaurant. Still haven't been able to get there. This was like right before the pandemic lockdown, shutdown. And of course, the flight, either the flight was canceled by the airline and the third party site didn't want to give me my money back. And I had to report them to, I guess, whatever the Canadian uh, version of like, not the Federal Trade Commission, but like some kind of consumer agency in Canada to get my money back. Uh, so, and then I saw what happened during those first wave of cancellations with the pandemic where Expedia and Travelocity were like, oh, sorry, boo, you, you out of luck. Nah. Um, having to rebook a canceled flight is a pain in the ass if you are not booked directly through the airline or if you didn't use a travel agent. So I may use a third party aggregator to kind of get a sense of prices, but I almost always book directly with the airfare. Um, do you always get travel insurance? I am not going to lie to you. I do not always get travel insurance and I know better. Um, and this is one of the things that I said I was going to do better with this year. Um, so expect to, expect to hear more about this. Um, cause I, I want to talk about, travel insurance do's and don'ts and all of that. So expect more content on that. Um, uh, will y'all be filming the storage unit chronicles? I feel like we're all invested. I don't know. Uh, we, will, we will ask Miss, Miss Dow how she feels about that. I, I am just coming to be of assistance. Whatever, whatever assistance is asked of me, I will try to provide. So I don't know. Um, okay. I, I, this is something I want to talk about. Um, pink sundial. Oh, eight, man. I wish your year, look, my year looked like yours. I will never have the money to do this. I, I, I don't believe that. I don't believe and you'll never have the money. Now, uh, you said this, somebody I met up with while I was out of town, uh, cause we met traveling. I happened to be in town where they lived and they were like, Hey, let's get together. And they kept saying things like, Oh, I'm just, I'm so jealous. I wish I could do that. I, you, you can. Um, now y'all, I think what gets lost in this conversation is Travel does not have to be expensive. You don't have to go all around the world. But also, I have I have prioritized travel and I do without other things. So like I even when I was in the US, travel was my number one thing when it came to de deciding where the money from my paycheck went. And if that meant I I hopped a, I think it was a $35 flight from Houston to Vegas. I left work on a Monday, flew to Vegas. I, I forget, I think I rented a car for like $13 <laughs> to go out to Death Valley. And I, that was Tuesday, Tuesday night, I flew. I don't, I don't even know if it was, would be considered a red eye, maybe back from Vegas to Houston. And I arrived in Houston at 6 a.m., changed my clothes in the car and went straight to work. Now that is not an ideal travel situation, but I wanted to go. So I figured out 
how can I make this work? How can I make this work where I don't have to spend a whole lot of money? I think my hotel might have been $24, $54. It was something, it, it wasn't a whole lot of money. So like the whole trip was less than a hundred bucks. Um, so I think I am somebody who's going to advocate to tr advocate for you to travel however you can. And, you know, there are places that I will never, I will probably never get to go. Like Antarctica costs damn near $20,000 a person. I, that ain't going to happen for me. And the only way to get a deal to travel to Antarctica is to hang out down in uh, Ushuaia and, you know, uh, kind of book something last minute. I don't know if I'm ever going to have the time in my schedule to do that. So Antarctica may be off the list for me. And I've made my peace with that because I can find other places to visit. So I don't want to hear you say you'll never be able to do it. I think you have to just kind of drill down to like how, what is the budget? Okay, where can I go for this? What can I do? Any travel is good travel as far as I'm concerned. It doesn't have to be international. There's nothing wrong with traveling domestic because I will quickly jump on a bus and go somewhere. Um, Cheryl, if you go to the um, URL, if you go to pickygirltravels.thinkific.com and you click on the Get Started Investing Challenge, on that landing page, it talks about like uh, what days the Zooms are, what time, um, and it gives you kind of pretty much all of the details of how it works. Um, if, if, if you like, it is not one-on-one, -on -one, it is a group. Uh, the, the, the Zoom calls are, are group sessions, but uh, the ladies really like that because there is power in knowing that you are not alone, that there are other people learning the same stuff. Uh, doesn't matter how old or how young you are. So yeah, if you go to pickygirltravels.thinkific.com, all the info is there. Eleanor, <laughs> I see what you're doing here. Um, I don't have a reason to go to Newark uh, or any place else. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, Newark is not in my plans. And if you don't, if you don't get that reference, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I don't know, uh, Sashana. It's been a long time since I have had. I haven't had a seven-year-old in 14, 15 years. I don't know. It was 20. It's been a long time. So I don't, I don't know. And then doing this in a place, she probably understands a little Spanish because her step great grandmother does not speak English. She's Cuban. She does not speak English. Um, so she probably understands a little Spanish, but I don't think she speaks Spanish. And then there's my Spanish. I don't know. It'll it'll be interesting if it happens. Oh, double M. Uh, the trip I took to Cuba and the trip I took to the, uh, El Salvador, both were educational tours. Uh, they were with Dr. Kiona, K-I-O-N-A. If you go to Instagram, you can find her profile. Um, I don't know. We, we, we will see what it is if the eight-year-old comes. And then I keep thinking like, what do you do as an eight-year-old? I don't even know y'all. I have forgotten all of that part of my life. <laughs> uh, I have spent a couple of days in Lisbon, uh, over the holidays. I can't make any recommendations. So I'm useless as far as that goes. But I bet if you are not 
subscribe to um, our Black Utopia, uh, Halisi and Rick. They live in Lisbon and have had a couple of great interviews with other folks who live there. So you might want to check that out. Ah, <laughs> Global Granny suggested the same thing. Uh, okay. All right. So um, I think we're going to call it a night. We're here at an hour and a half. Thank you all so much for coming to hang out. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do. And let me ask you for a small favor. If there is a video of mine that has been very helpful to you uh, in any way, shape or form, share that with somebody, um, you know, uh, what is it? Each one, teach one, help, lend a helping hand. I don't know. But if there's some some piece of content that I made that you found really, really helpful, um, please, please share that. Um, uh, ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. But I took the great, the Get Started Investing Challenge and it gave me the support and courage to step up my investing game. Don't run, walk. I mean, don't walk, run. To the sign up link. Oh, thank you so much. It's if again, if if you're somebody who you're like, I don't know what to do. This this is the challenge for you. Um, you will leave understanding what to do. And I, I think we just demystify a lot of that uh, process and the community of the ladies uh, helps with, you know, mitigating some of that fear, the apprehension that you have, because I think a lot of us think it's just us, like everybody else knows what's going on, but I don't, uh, and no, you're not alone. There's a lot of folks that don't know, which is why I do this challenge. So again, if that is one of your goals, that's something you put on your vision board. That is one of your resolutions for this year. You might want to go to the website, uh, pickygirltravels.thinkific.com uh, and read the information and see if it's a good fit for you. We are starting Monday. The challenge officially starts, uh, but we do have a welcome call on Sunday, uh, January 15th, I believe that is. All right. So good night, everybody. And uh, talk to y'all next time. Maybe <laughs> if I can get this to end. <laughs>